when you filter the reaction mixture, you're going to see that there's a lot of uh, uh, solids. Some of them are going to be, or it's going to be darkly colored. There is some amount of uh, red phosphorus and metallic arsenic that's formed in this reaction, which is why the appearance of the reaction mixture now looks so dark. Um, but once we filter it, we're going to get a bright orange solution. You'll see. Guess we'll have we'll to believe back. you on that. Flour and our reaction mixture looks pretty mm, orange and heterogeneous. So we're going to filter it through a plug of sealite. I'm just going to set it aside here. So we're going to use about uh, one inch of sealite uh, just to make sure we don't clog our front with any sodium chloride or other solids that formed during the reaction. pre-moisten my seal light with a little bit of solvent. So we did the reaction in THF. So I'm just gonna use a little THF here. bright orange filtrate. It's really pretty. Uh, the reaction mixture always looks a little dark and gloomy before you filter it, but it always filters and looks beautiful because the, the product, the niobium dichloride uh, trist uh, O-dip complex is a very bright neon orange color. While this filters, I can uh, show you what some isolated solids look like. So we make this uh, compound on very large scales. So we have a lot around. You can see it's really bright orange color. So here we're going to isolate the dichloride as the THF adduct, but it looks pretty much identical. Once this filters, we're going to want to wash the filter cake with some toluene. So ASP3 and P4 and related molecules are very soluble in toluene. Uh, they're pretty soluble in THF as well, but we just want to make sure that we don't leave anything uh, valuable on the filter cake or in the reaction flask. Probably overall something like 20 mils of toluene will be used. And then we'll uh, take the reaction mixture completely to dryness. And before it reaches dryness, you'll start to see fluffy white uh, ASP3 crashing out, uh, which is a good sign. And uh, hopefully we'll catch that on film uh, later on. Does it always filter so slowly? Yeah, pretty much always. That's why I, tr I typically use a you know larger frit than is necessary because uh, so you're making a lot of really finely divided solids that kind of form this layer on the sealite that is fairly impermeable. So it's like filtering through a fine frit. It's just slower. <laughs> so it's almost done. And then I want to wash it with toluene uh, once and then maybe one more time until the, uh, the filtrate runs colorless. And because it's a mixture of THF and toluene, it's going to take a couple hours to uh, dry completely. So you want to definitely make sure your light's off and you're keeping things out of direct light. Uh, as I said before, ASP3 is not that sensitive to light, but certainly you don't want to take any risks of losing your compound. Uh, 
So you don't cover the reaction class? No. Uh, so while it's in solution, it's pretty, pretty not sensitive to light. So I've never, uh, once I'm here, I never have seen any like uh, red phosphorus forming in the reaction mixture. The reaction mixture stays completely uh, homogeneous the entire time. But so I just do it as an extra safety precaution. Once we re once it's dry and we remove it from the glove box to sublime, we're definitely going to cover that in uh, alu aluminum foil. So you can see our filter cake is almost clean. Uh, add this last bit of toluene. Let that go through, and then we'll take it to dryness. And I'll come back later to see how that looks. With the ASP3 synthesis and uh, the compound is pretty, much, or the reaction mixture is pretty dry. Uh, it looks just like a bright orange powder. Um, so we're just gonna get it out of this reaction flask and then put it into a sublimator. And the sublimator we're gonna use uh, looks uh, like this. So it has a very flat bottom, and that's where all the ASP3 will collect. So it's it's nicer because it has a very narrow body. So the ASP3 doesn't sublime all over the top of the, the vessel, so you can not lose much in your sublimation. So you usually just use a spatula and transfer it to the base of the sublimator. Make sure you scrape it all out of the flask as best you can. So pour it into the bottom of the sublimator and then uh, try to get any last little bits that are easy to get off. off. So you do lose some of your yield this way, but uh, if you try to just dry it in a sublimator itself, it gets really messy. So I found this is really the best way. You can uh, wash this flask out and then recrystallize what's remaining so that you don't lose any of your ASP3.